big reveal's coming. The big reveal's coming. The big reveal's coming. The big reveal is coming. There's a big reveal coming? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Instagram. It is 9.30. It is Cotton Cuts Live time. Um, I have a special guest with me this morning. This is one of my two favorite co-hosts. Um, who are you and why are you here? Hello, uh, I'm Dominic. I am here because I was asked to be here. <laughs> are you, you're not supposed to be in school today? What's going on? Oh, yeah, it's spring break for us. So I get to go to work with my mom. Yes, yes. So Dominic um, is my son. He joins us every now and then on these videos. I know he's a fan favorite. And he graciously agreed to join us today because we've got some fun things for him to share with everybody as we go along. All right. So we're going to start the show like we do every week. And we're going to answer questions from you. I have a special guest to help me answer questions today. Are you ready? Yeah. He's like, you, we have not seen these. Questions. Like, Answers. Yes. So if you want to submit a question for our show to answer um, each week, just go to cottoncuts.com slash live. Submit your question. And um, these are literally handed these. I this morning I was like, Paula, oh, I don't have the questions. And so she handed them to me literally 30 seconds before we went live. So I've not seen these before. Our first question comes from Robin Robin Guthrie. Where is Robin from? Huntsville, um, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama. Hello from Ohio, Sherry's SP. Hello. There's all these, look all these people saying good morning to you. Yeah. You're popular. All right. So to Robin's question, what is one quilting technique that you are afraid of trying and why? Hmm. One that I am afraid of trying and why? Okay. So I think, so I think it's, it's hard for me to say I'm afraid of trying something. I think there are things that I think that might be quote unquote too hard. I'm not necessarily afraid of trying them. I just oftentimes think that they are too hard. And I think for me, one of those things that used to be kind of the block that I was afraid of trying was sewing curves. I'm an engineer. Lines go straight, right? We have polygons. Polygons are, you know, straight mm -hmm, sided, yes. right? And they come to a corner and you turn the corner and you sew, right? That's why there aren't many circles. There, you know, <laughs> there but in geometry, there are circles. Yes. yes. That's a line that just kind of bends around. Yeah. It yes. curves. <laughs> Right. So I think for me, sewing curves was one of those kind of, you know, blocks. I always thought you had to have some special fancy technique to do it. And then our guild hosted a speaker that her primary method of, it was Latifa Safir, her primary method of sewing was curves. And I was like, okay, I'm going to grab this one by the horns. I am going to make it such that I can learn how to do this, even though it's hard. And if I am in a classroom setting with a lot of people, then surely I'll be able to master this. And so um, we'll find a picture of this, this curved quilt that I made. I, I did all these tulip pink um, raccoons and I thought, do you remember the tulip pink clamshells? Yeah. Yes. And I fussy cut out all these raccoons and I was ready for class and they canceled the class. And I was like, oh, I am never going to learn how to do this. And I've got all this super expensive fabric that I've just cut up into shapes that I will never be able to sew. And then they rescheduled the class and I couldn't go. And so I literally went to a quilt retreat and I was like, I have this project. It's completely cut out. I am going to sew this. And I was like, if I don't do it, then I will have no other choice than to bother everyone else around me for three days. And so I was like, okay, I've got to get it done. I went to um, Lativa's website. She has a YouTube channel and she has this YouTube tutorial. I literally had my machine in front of me and the camera and I went real slow, went very, very slow. And I learned how to do it. And like three hours later, I was sewing the curves the quilt top is together. It got real easy. And I was like, why did I think this was so hard? And I think it's just one of those things I just had to, to start, right? Mm -hmm. I tell you guys this all the time, right? The first step is the hardest step. But once you start, then anything that you think is hard is going to become much, much easier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What is one technique you're afraid of trying? Hmm. I think curves. I haven't really tried the curves yet, but... <laughs> I want to try them at some point. Yes, I, I will happily teach you. And if not, I have a YouTube video for you that'll uh -huh. help. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for the question, Robin. I appreciate it. All right, our next question comes from Claire Sutherland from Stanford, Connecticut. Stanford, Connecticut. Yes, thank you for your question, Claire. I appreciate it. All right, so her question is Dominic, what are your three best tips for new quilters? All right, so I think. For new quilters, so um, let's think about this. I'm sure you have a couple to add that you can add to this list. But I think for me as a new quilter, um, one of the very first, one of the, the things that I did really late that I wish I would have done sooner 
was take a sewing machine class at your quilt shop. And so I bought a new sewing machine and with it, I had four weeks of classes. And I think I learned more in those four weeks than I could have had I taught myself on my own. And I feel like, you know, taking a sewing machine class was a game changer for me. And I wish I'd have done it sooner. I learned so much about the different stitches. I learned so much about stitch length and tension and different presser feet and different needles. And it, to me, having that foundation of knowledge has completely changed the way I quilt. What is another tip that you would have for a new quilter? Mm, uh, take your time, have fun quilting. It has practical uses, but it's also a lot to do for fun. Yes, it is a lot of fun, right? I, yes. think, I think a lot of people get wrapped up in perfection. And I think one of the, the best tips for a new quilter is it's okay not to be perfect, especially as you're learning something new. And you know, the, the creative process is the journey. It's not always about the destination. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think um, another tip for a new quilter is not be afraid to ask questions. I think um, oftentimes we get stuck in this little bubble and um, we, we think it's like just us. And if we make a mistake, we've got to solve it ourselves. But I think the quilting community is, um, the quilting community is so big and there's so many different ways to connect with people outside of even your local community that asking questions, you know, find a Facebook group. Our Cotton Cuts Facebook group is a great place to ask a question. There are no stupid questions there. I don't, I don't allow anyone to make anything negative about anyone in that group. And so I think find the community where you can safely ask questions and get help. Go to YouTube. YouTube is a plethora of information. And I think just don't be afraid to ask the questions. Find someone, send them an email. What's the worst they can do? They don't answer, in which case you're exactly where you started. And if they do, you've learned something from someone. And so that's just not be afraid to ask the question. What other tip would you have? Hmm. Watch, watch a, a YouTube video starring you where you teach people how to sew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I guess that, that's kind of a, a good segue. So I think what we can do is we can ask folks to, you know, put um, into the comments anything, any tips that they would have for new quilters. Mm -hmm. But. Um, what we did yesterday with Dominic is um, we had him do a teaching video for people on how to sew the puzzle mystery quilt. And so he was here in the shop and he actually sewed for the video and gave tips and tricks on how to sew a PMQ. That video is going to be ready in a couple of days. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Are you excited about it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it looks like um, one of our one of our members has asked, how long have you been sewing, Dominic? Uh, a long time, actually. I think they're like five or six years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, this is one of those things I taught my kids, you know, really, really young how to sew. It, it's just, you know, get that we had a basic sewing machine. Um, we started sewing on paper. That is a fantastic way to teach a kid how to sew because it's just paper. There's no, um, there's no fabric. There's no loss. You're not ripping things out. Um, it is, um, he did a fantastic job learning how to sew on paper. And then, um, one of your first big projects was we sewed card holders at the beginning of the pandemic because the kids couldn't hold, um, decks of cards in their hands. So we sewed these card holders. Everyone got to pick out their own fabric. Everyone sewed their own project. Even my husband used a sewing machine. And yeah. it's just, it's one of those just basic skills. And, and, um, in my neighborhood, not very many people know how to use a sewing machine. So they, they were calling me a lot. And as much as I love like going over and helping people, I started sending the kids. And what they rapidly learned is they would be paid in baked goods. And so they learned how to help other people with their sewing machines. So the, the kids are really great at just and generally knowing how to use a sewing machine. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. All I right. mean, I can put the pressure foot down with the best of them. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so Terry's excited to see your video tutorial. I'm excited to see it too, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like it. I like mm -hmm. kids. I like kids teaching sewing. It was, it was a lot of fun to make. All right. Thank you guys for your questions. I appreciate those. I know um, we've seen a comment about definitely sending in a question and, you know, it's, it, we're here to help, right? It's all about not being afraid to ask that question, Judy. All right. So what's happening in the shop this week? Oh my gosh. What's not happening in the shop this week. So this week, um, we shipped the classic boxes yesterday. So the classic Wait, hold membership. On, hold on. Sorry, there's what? a comment pinned up there. All right. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. This is this is why I have to have a co-host. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Catherine Allen is says, what does she ask? Does Dominic have his own machine? Uh yes and no, I guess, but I use this machine here. So 
So it's, he uses an Everstone sewing machine. These are the sewing machines we had when we had a sewing studio and we taught kids how to sew. So he uses an Everstone sewing machine. But yes, you have your own sewing machine. It's yeah. in your closet at home. Yeah. Yeah. You could get it out and get it set up. You know yeah. how to use it. Oh, my gosh. He's yeah, being humble. All right. But yes, he does have his own sewing machine, as does Lincoln. And they, whenever they want to sew a project or they just want to create something, they just bring it out and they raid my stash and make a mess and then mm -hmm. um, let, make me clean it up. No, ma no mess. <laughs> All right. I'm so, doing neat. All right. Okay. So um, we were talking. So we shipped the classic this week. The classic and the mini pop are the preference based. So we coordinated everyone's boxes one at a time, put ribbons around them and shipped them out yesterday. That's a lot of fun. But we are focusing a lot on the Tree of Life Puzzle Mystery Quilt. So we are shipping Clue 3 um, very soon. So the team is getting started on it. They're getting a jump, packing it out. Um, this is a perfect time to talk about. Signups are closing soon for Tree of Life. In fact, I am going to go through this weekend, and we're going to take a look at inventory. And I am probably going to mark three or four colorways as sold out. So if you have been hesitating, if you're on the fence, what should we tell them to do? Immediately. Do it, do it, do it immediately. <laughs> Run, 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 run. Go to the link that uh, for people watching on YouTube, I think. It's, yeah, it's it's yeah. on the screen for people watching on YouTube and on Facebook and get signed up for those colorways. We are getting short on fabric, guys. I'm not going to lie. Um, it has been a super popular mystery. We're excited about the Tree of Life in here. And so definitely get in there and don't miss out. What is your favorite Tree of Life colorway? Have you seen any of them? Mm. I did hope yesterday. Yeah, that's right. You did so hope yesterday. I did, I did like the pinks and the reds. And the yeah, so hope is our pink and our red mystery colorway. And Paula, our off-camera friend Paula. Um, so this is actually the clue that he sewed in the tutorial. And so it's the pinks and the reds hope colorway. It is, um, Dominic actually sewed this block, guys, right? Yeah. This is a Dominic block. And let me see if we can see it everywhere. <laughs> and it's pinks and it's reds. And it's breast cancer. Breast cancer themed and why did you pick hope can you tell everyone why uh, you picked hope? because we're going to be donating it uh to what's it uh yeah somebody who's affected currently by breast cancer right so this is a team cotton cuts quilt is this hope colorway and so because it is breast cancer themed um all members of my team are going to be sewing clues dominant got to sew clue one yesterday and on video <laughs> and so um so and so we are um we're sewing it together and then we're partnering with an organization that raises money for breast cancer awareness and we're going to donate it to them for their auction um at the end of the year and so there's gonna be lots more videos on this paul is going to do a great job kind of showing it as it comes along but you know dominic and lincoln are part of the cotton cuts family and so dominic had an opportunity to sew our first clue quest. so hope is definitely still available guys um it is a lot of fun it we, we like it it's a batik do you like sewing with batiks yeah we also hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and this is why I have a co-host. Yes. So, <laughs> and so he said in the video yesterday, he likes the cheeks because there's no right side, no wrong side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're great. Okay. Very hard to mess it up. Yes. <laughs> it's a great beginner friendly, right? The cheeks are fantastic yes. for beginners. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe that's a we're we're gonna add to our library of best tips for new quilters is batik because they yeah. don't have a right side and a wrong side, and so they're fantastic to sew with. All right, um, let's see. So this week's topic, so we're gonna talk about our snippet memberships. Okay, so we do a lot of die cutting in the shop. Do you know how many pieces we die cut a month in here, Dominic? Mm. Take a wild guess. How many do you, how many triangles and squares? Six thousand. Six thousand. Yes. Um. Very cold. Very cold. How many do you think we die cut a month? Three thousand. Oh my God! Much colder. Okay. Cold. Okay. So add a zero to the end and then keep going. Thirty thousand. No. <laughs> so we die cut between seventy-five and a hundred thousand triangles and squares every month. So so that's that's a lot. That is a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, so we we die cut a lot of triangles and squares, right? Right, and so um, you know, as part of the process, there's always some scrap and some leftover, and so it's just the way it is. Like we we can't cut it as efficiently as we could if we were using um, a rotary and a mat. Um, and so the die cutters we use actually leave a lot of scrap, and so right, Jana, like that's a big like drop jaw emoji then. 
Um, and so the die cutters leave a lot of scrap and I'm a quilter. My kids are burgeoning quilters. Do we throw fabric away? No. No, why not? Because it can be used for other projects. Right. And so I was looking at all this, this the, the what we call them frames that are left over from our die cut. And I was like, surely we can do something with this. And so for about the past five years, we've had what we call a snippet membership or a snippet bag. And these are, um, our team takes all the leftovers, they put them on the table and we package them up into bags that are less than a pound. And they're, they're you know, loosely coordinated. They look like this, thank you, Dominic. And they are just what is left over from the puzzle mystery quilt. And for us, it's, we do this, right? So why would we do this, right? We could just throw this fabric away, right? We're, we're all about sustainability. We don't want to throw the fabric away. We know it has life and we don't want to fill our landfills with this. There's lots of companies that are doing a great job with textile, with textile recycling. And we're actually partnering with one of them here in St. Louis via um, Mac Barnes, one of our, one of our affiliates. Um, but it's one of these things. We just don't want to chop it up and put it into recycled material. We'd rather put it in the hands of quilters that can do fun things with it. And so that's why we created this membership. Um, Paula is going to put on the screen um on youtube and on facebook what we 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 can actually buy a membership so we will send it to you every month or you can buy one at a time and it doesn't have to be on a, on a subscription we charge ten dollars a month for it um no shipping so it's basically at cost like this is this is not something that like we're making a lot of money on it like that's not the purpose of this the purpose of this is really just to keep this fabric out of a landfill and to get it into the hands of people that can make the most use of it because it is it is really cool. And so I'm going to show you. So like every time we show this product, we just show this bag. Right. And so it's hard to kind of get a sense for what is actually inside the bag. So what I had Paula do was kind of open up a bag so you could see how much fabric actually comes in this bag. And so like we put them on hangers just so you can kind of see. And when we die cut, like you can see, like that's a set, that's seven and a quarter quarter square triangles, which I know a lot of you use and have. So like this was, this is in one bag, this other here, right? So it's different colors and it's different amounts of fabric in each bag. They all weigh the same. And so if I was to actually cut it off a bolt, um, it would be about two and a half yards of fabric. Could you do something with two and a half yards of fabric? Yeah. Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so last night, um, I took home one of the snippet bags and I got my iron out. Like that's that's the beauty of the snippets, right? You can, I, can, can you iron fabric? Yes. Yes, you can. It's and, not difficult. <laughs> oh my gosh, my child. And so I, I literally, I ironed one of the snippet bags and then I used my scissors and I cut it into what I would consider to be a lot of usable pieces, right? So we're gonna show you kind of the shapes that I was able to get out of one of our snippet bags. So go ahead and hold them up, Dominic, make sure you can see it on both. But yeah, we got some of these triangles, right guys? So these triangles are, okay, we're gonna use the mom method. They're about three, six, about seven inches on their longest dimension, right? Did you like that? You know, your index finger is about three inches long, right? For purposes of estimating. Wait, 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 hold on. I mean, mine is three inches. Yours. <laughs> I have very small hands. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Here we go, people. Yeah, okay, right. So your index no. finger is about three inches, right? So, okay. Um, so we got some triangles. What else did we get? So we got, um, guys, some long strips. And like, check this. But not, just, is... not just some long strips. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got a long strip, right? And so as I was playing this, I was like, darn, that's almost a, a jelly roll, right? And so there's that piece. Then we also have these long strips in here as well. And we have these baby little pieces. And so these baby little pieces are gonna go into, I'm gonna make some um, abstract log cabin coasters for our table because you can put these little pieces together and it doesn't have to be precise. I'm not even gonna trim any of this stuff, guys. I'm literally just gonna sew it as it is and just kind of see what comes together. And then um, bonus, so this is part of the, the snippet bonus, is we got all these like white batik long strips in my bag. And these are going to be all the bindings, all the borders. They're going to be part of the backing, and they're going to help break up some of these, um, some of these solid colors, right? I am super excited to see what I can make with this, like yes. this purple. Oh, I forgot to say one wait, of my wait, wait, um, wait. A comment is highlighted. I add all of my offcuts to a giant cauldron and call it cabbage soup. I I love not wasting good fabrics and dig through it for foundation paper piecing. Savannah, that's actually I've used 
Um, and when I do my foundation paper piecing, I use snippets for every single one of them. I don't want to cut off little pieces off yardage. And this makes it very easy. It takes all that gilt away from cutting the pretty fabric is you can actually use that use these, right? I don't feel guilty taking a little snip for a foundation paper piece out of these guys at all. Um, what I wanted well, to say about feeling better for yourself about well, yourself. I mean, th there's a lot of feel good, right? There's a lot of reasons why this slips the way this makes you feel good, right? So you're yeah. helping keep fabric out of the landfill, but you're also not cutting yardage of that designer fabric that you spent a lot of money for. There's actually, it's a thing. Like people don't necessarily want to cut into the nice fabric because it is so expensive. And this takes all the pressure off of that. So if you're afraid of cutting into, you know, your limited edition tool of pink raccoons, you can use this fabric. Um, I also did want to talk about that, that one of the beauties of the snippet is if you are a, um, a salvage lover, which I know has kind of come and gone over time, but in all of these collections, you're going to get the, the salvage, right? We can't put this into um, a puzzle mystery quilt, right? You guys would actually call us and email us and it's not pretty if we do that. Um, but there's, um, you're not going to want that in your finished quilt, but in all of these bags, the full salvage is there. And so one of my um, friends, she would come into our shop when we would have open sews and she would take a couple snippets with her because she loved it. And as an appreciation, yeah. she actually made me this cute little pin cushion from salvages that she collected from the, the stitches, the, the snippet, excuse me. And so it has some of my favorite designers on here. Have you met any of these designers? I met Juicy Juice. Yes, Dominic has met Juicy Juice. And so Juicy Juice has um, one of the salvage is, is from one of his collections and it has his iconic beard and glasses. And so, um, so we love these, right? And, and if you're like, if you wanna do a salvage project, if your guild is having a challenge where you need to collect a whole bunch of salvages rather than going and buying yardage, this will definitely help you with that. So we have a ton of comments and questions coming in. So it looks like Flicky Chicky says she used hers to make common crazy, crazy blocks. Yes. And, and if you just want to like pick this up and just start sewing these together and see what sort of, you know, piece of fabric you can make from it, it is a fantastic opportunity for that. Um, yeah. So we have a Facebook user. It's fine. Um, it says that they ironed theirs also, right? This is one of those, like at the end of the day, like I just ironed these and it was so much fun. I had a little glass of wine right there. Everyone knows I like the red um, and ironed it out. And then did you, just did you used have it as a peanut m &Ms? I did not have my peanut m &Ms because two children seem to have consumed all the peanut no, m no, that was had in my house. All right, so we have a question. Um, are they random? So yes, they are random. And so we, you know, it's one of those, we used to put them together by PMQ colorway but that took a lot of time. And I want to keep these as cost effective as possible. And so in order to do that, we do randomize them. Um, we, we can, if you place an order for one of these bags, not a, not the subscription, but place an order for the one-time bag, you can put in a color preference. And when we fill the order, we'll try and grab a bag that kind of relates to those colors that you suggest. We just can't always guarantee it, unfortunately. Again, we want to keep the price super economical. We want to make sure that we're getting these out to you guys. And so we need to keep our labor costs a little lower. So I apologize about that. Um, okay, so how is snippet related to bolt ends? Okay, so um, this is the snippet, right? This is what's left over after we die cut. Also on our website, we have bolt end bags. And so when we're unrolling the bolts of fabric and we have giant tables and we roll them the full length and we're trying to cut everything to you know, 15, 16, 18 inches, we always have those odd pieces at the end of a bolt. Um, you'll see them in a, in a quilt shop when they're unrolling them. They're just short pieces. Um, we can't use them for the die cutter. It takes a lot of effort to iron them. And so we put them into color coordinated bags for our bolt ends. Um, we use this for all of our memberships. So the classic, the modern maker, everything puzzle mystery quilt. If we have a little bit left over at the end, we put all of those together and we do the same thing. We put them in about a two pound, three pound bag. And um, we send those out the door to you guys. And so there'll be a variety. They might not all be the same collection, but it's more definitely with a fabric, with a, with the fabric. So it's going to be a full length and it's going to be more inches versus these guys. These are kind of scrappy pieces. So you'll definitely be able to get more traditional quilt shapes out of a bolt end versus um, a snippet, which is what we've got here. Now we put together puzzle mystery quilt bolt ends, which are the same things. They'll have the, you know, few inches left over at the end. Plus we'll throw in a couple, you know, potpourri of triangles and squares and strips 
um, from our die cutters that we have left over at the end of the program. Again, we throw nothing away here, guys. We really try to do it the best we can to just not throw things away and put them out to people that can actually use them. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna ask people to tell us what they've done with their snippets. So wherever you're watching this um, in, the, in the interwebs, what are you using? I see um, Rachel Q Stitches uses hers for half inch hexes. So um, I'm gonna give mad props to Rachel for using a half inch hexy. So you know my hexy project, right? Those hexes are one inch. Imagine half that size. <laughs> I know. So small. That is that is aspirational, Rachel. I am. That is fantastic that you're doing a half inch hexy. I, I give. I applaud. You. I definitely think that that is definitely a travel project. Like I could totally do that at your upcoming track meet. I could do a half inch hexy, right? And you could use any of this for that type of project. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, Okay, so our giveaway on this video is we are going to be giving away, what, how many do you think we should give away? How many snippet bags should we give away? Five? We're going to pick five winners and five people are going to get a snippet bag. And so what question should we ask them to reply to when they're watching the video to be entered to win one of our five um, snippet bags? Uh, what do you make with your snippets? Or what would you make as yeah. well? Because not, yeah. not everyone has a snippet. Okay. So if you were to receive a bag and get all these lovely strips and triangles, what would you make? And so let's use that as kind of inspiration for other people watching this video. And so wherever you're watching it, leave a comment. What would you make with a snippet bag? And we're going to pick five. How many? Five. Five people to win. Three, four, five. All right. We got some doll quilts. We got some crazy quilt with kids, right? I think, Kristen, I think this is this is a great way to break kids out of the you have to have a consistent seam allowance. String quilts are also a great idea, Rachel. I've made some string kind of string borders on some of my quilts using these types of um, strips. It's fantastic. It's a lot, a lot of fun. All right. Did we go? Let's go through our checklist. Um, did we get everything? Oh, don't forget. So $5 of every new classic modern maker in Java goes to Cotton Cuts Care. Do you know who our Cotton Cuts Care's organization is this month? No. It is Reading is Fundamental. We love supporting reading and literacy, and that's one of our causes that's near and dear to our heart. Um, this is something that a member suggested that we support Reading is Fundamental. So help us help them. Every new classic modern maker, Java, and Chroma Super Pop, we donate $5 to them. What do you think about that? giving back yes we give back fantastic all right um what else do we have to say dun, 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 dun. i think we've got all the good stuff paula is running okay so we also need to make sure we did we did talk about that what does she want us to talk about again that, the giveaway? that it's not too late to sign up for tree of life <laughs> yeah yeah how quickly should they go sign up if they want to get in before we shut it down uh, immediately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fast as possible. Just go to uh, we had the link up at some point, but yeah, go to cottoncuts.com and then get started. Yeah, yes, because um, we we do shut down signups at the end of clue three. Um, once we ship clue three, because we need to do, then do what? Get ready for the next. PMQ. Get ready for the next PMQ. And so, should we tell them since they've hung with us this long, what the theme is for the next mystery? So should we give them a little sneak peek? You don't know this yet. I know this. A tiny sneak peek. Okay, so a tiny sneak peek for everyone watching. Our next PMQ, which will start at the end of May, signing up and ship at the end of July, it is going to be themed American Southwest um, ge geological features. So, um, so that's all. That's all we're going to give. Them. All we're going to give them. That's we're cut. You cut me off. I've been cut off. <laughs> You're going to have to wait. All right. We're going to, you guys are going to have to keep checking back and we're going to keep dropping more sneak peeks, but mm -hmm. it is Southwestern themed. We'll let them speculate. Okay. Yeah. I, I think how I like that you are. My gosh. Okay. So you guys can blame him because me, I'm just going to talk and tell you guys everything. All right. So <laughs> Jana is asking if we can see the tree today. So we're actually still ironing leaves, Jana, under the tree. We're still getting so that into the shop. We, like, <laughs> yes so dominic and lincoln yes yeah, so dominic and lincoln what did you guys have to do this week on spring break we had to peel the sticky part off the leaves yes so my children oh, have been God. helping get us get us caught up so Gianna, we're gonna make a video of the tree like the, the i know we've kind of seen it it started out as just the bare bones 
but now leaves are on top of each other. It is so much fun. I am so heart happy with that. It smells out so much. Yeah. Put some leaves on the ground, so it's like it's kind of falling. No, 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 no. It's spring. The leaves are coming up. They're not falling to the ground. Uh, All right. So Chloe has posted that she would make hearts for I found a quilted heart. So we actually did this. We sponsored I found a quilted um, heart a couple years ago. That might be a fun thing for us to bring back. Um, it was, it was a lot of fun. You, you basically, you go to the website, I found a quilted heart, um, and it gives you instructions. And so you sew a quilted heart and you leave it in a place with a little note tagged to it. And it's a random act of kindness. Um, you can put it wherever you feel like someone might need a heart just to boost their day. And so as you're walking along, if you see the heart, um, you can take it. And one of my employees actually made a ton and put them by a veterinary's office, an emergency vet's office. And so it was so just, like it just, it spreads so much joy and so much feel good. So Chloe, that is a fantastic idea. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, so we're not gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll save that one for later. Normally I would do, 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 do. Um, so next month is April and it's Earth Day. So be, be um, on the lookout for a potential snippet challenge. We've done that before and that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. All right, is that is that enough? Is that, um, okay, so Flicky Chicky is saying, you know, she lives in the Southwest. That's actually where I was born and grew up and graze for the highways. Yeah, I mean, flicky chicky, can you still go like 80 miles an hour in the Southwest on the highway? That was that was my kind of big experience was moving out of the Southwest and realizing not everyone drives that fast on the highway. Okay. Yeah, yes. it, was, it was the 80s, so it was a different. It was a different time. Oh my God. You kill me. All right, so, oh my God, there's so many comments. So, so, so Terry is saying, thank you for working on the tree. Thanks for working on the tree. All right, I think we're gonna leave it at that, guys. So join us next week, Thursday at 9.30 a.m. We are going to have a new and fascinating topic for everybody. And um, is there anything you want to tell everyone? Be sure to check out your sewing tutorial when it's ready. Yeah. Okay. I think um, Paula is cutting us off is what that means. Paula is telling yeah. us we're done. Yeah. So Paula, when will the video be done? Approximate. Okay. It'll be up early next week, gang. And he's, and it, okay. Anything else we should tell the lovely people? Have a great um, weekend. Yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. Happy sewing, and we will um, see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you next week.